Hello, everybody, and welcome. Well, Milky Way season is here upon us in the Northern Hemisphere, and with that, I wanted to make you guys a video covering how to edit Milky Way photos in Lightroom uh, with a few of the newer capabilities that Lightroom has, uh, like the masking tools and things like that. I wanted to make this video for those of you that might be taking some Milky Way photos, but you might not quite have a grasp on how to edit those photos. I wanna show you a few of my favorite tips and tricks in Lightroom to make those photos pop and make those photos really look nice. Milky Way photography is such a fun thing to do, but the photos do become quite difficult to edit if you don't know what to look for. So hopefully this video will help you guys out. I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into Lightroom here and we're gonna look at one of my photos that I shot a couple years ago. Okay, so here is my photo here. Uh, I've already stacked it in Starry Landscape Stacker to reduce the noise. And now I will go ahead and adjust some sliders over here. Uh, you don't have to know how to use Starry Landscape Stacker, but essentially what it does is just make it so my photo is not quite as noisy. You'll see when this loads out here, it still has a little bit of noise, of course, because it's shot after dark, but it's not quite as noisy. So first thing I'm gonna do is just go down here and hit all of the sliders, pretty simple. I'm gonna add a little touch of contrast. We're gonna drop the highlights. We're gonna increase the shadows. And before we forget, we also want to enable the profile corrections. If your lens doesn't come up, you can go ahead and select it from the list. And you can see now Tamron, it has selected my 28-75. And now we can go ahead and bring up the whites and bring up the blacks. And maybe we'll bring up the exposure just a touch. Now we can bring up the texture and clarity ever so slightly. And we can maybe even add some vibrance. Now, the first thing that I'm seeing that I'm not liking is the reflection is really green for some reason. So I'm gonna go into the saturation. I can drop the greens, but I actually might use this tool right here, which allows me to click and select on the photo and just drag it down. And it'll bring that whole area down. That's looking a little bit better down there now. Also, I'm not really liking these blues in here. I'm gonna bring that down. And I might try and go up here on the oranges and bring that up a touch. And there's gonna be another better way to do that in just a second here. So I want to keep poking around here. I do wanna do some sharpening. So you can increase the sharpening and then that unlocks these tools below it. First thing you wanna use is masking. I'm gonna hold Alt Option and drag this masking slider out. And anything that's white is gonna be sharpened, anything that's black is not gonna be sharpened. So I want to sharpen the stars, obviously, and the edge of the mountain. That looks pretty good to me. You can click this box to change the spot where the sample box over here is showing, I guess. Uh, now we can increase the sharpening just a little bit. We're gonna bring the detail all the way up, bring the radius all the way down. And I'm just looking inside this box to see if I'm liking what it's doing and it is looking pretty good. I'm gonna add just like 10 points of noise reduction for this photo just cause it's a night photo. And now we're looking pretty good. I don't really like to do any color grading. Um, you can go into the tone curve. There is some really nice things you can do with the tone curve. You can bring up those shadows. Um, you can pop the highlights. You can see when I pop the highlights, it's just hitting the core of the Milky Way, which can really help me to make things look nice. And you can even bring the lights down. So quite a few things you can do here. Um, but what I really wanna show you guys here is some of the advanced masking tools that they added in Lightroom in the last uh, year or so that I have not made a video on quite yet. Uh, last thing I wanna do before I jump to those though is just increase the saturation just a hair. And now we're looking good. So, so now we're gonna jump into using some of the masking tools. And these are so incredibly helpful for night photography because they allow us to select only certain parts of the image to make local adjustments rather than global adjustments, which allows us to just enhance the Milky Way or just enhance the foreground, whatever we wanna do. I'm gonna show you guys how I use those for my Milky Way photography. So go ahead and hit the masking button here and then this will open. Now, uh, a lot of times if you have a photo like this, the select sky will work really well. So let's go ahead and try that. It's gonna try and detect the sky. Essentially what we want it to do is affect just this top part of the photo. And it looks pretty good. You can already see this looks really nice. Um, and it has selected quite a bit of the sky and not the foreground. So now if you wanna actually go back and see your photo, uncheck show overlay so you can see the photo. And what you can do here is make a new effect. So what I wanna do is add some saturation and this is only adding to the sky. It's only adding to the spots in under this mask essentially. So I'm gonna add some saturation. 
I'm going to add some contrast. And I might even warm it up ever so slightly. Oops, and I'm gonna undo that. You can see sometimes it's a little slow to render. I'm gonna leave that as is actually. You can add some clarity if you wanna kinda make it punch. Add some saturation. And that's looking pretty good to me. Now, the other thing that I might want to do, I'm going to create a new mask here. I'm going to select the subject, which will hopefully select the bottom half of the frame. So you can see sometimes it will say no subject detected. That's all right. We can go ahead and make our own mask. What we're going to do is create a new mask, and we are going to make it based on a luminance range. Now, when I make this on a luminance range, I'm going to sample from this color right here. And you can see that if we view this mask, that it's just selecting this bottom area here. Um, you can even select a spot on the snow, but you can see that's not really gonna do what we want it to do. So we're gonna go ahead and select this here. Then I'm going to drag these sliders to increase what it's selecting. And I don't wanna select any of the sky. So we're just going to go with about right there. Now what we can do is add another mask and we can just add a brush. So what we're gonna do is go in with a brush now and we're gonna bring this up. We're painting with a white brush here. And I wanna reduce the feather here. We're just going to paint this all white and we want the density to be 100 as well so that it totally shows through. We can reduce the size. Now you could just paint this whole thing with a brush. The reason why I used um, the color mask here, or the luminance mask rather, is so that I wouldn't have to do so much painting on the edges. And I'm not too concerned about getting really up close just for the sake of this tutorial video. If you were really editing this photo and you wanted to make sure you got it as good as absolutely possible, you could go in there and touch up those spots. But for the sake of this video, I'm not too concerned. Plus this is snow, so I don't really wanna bring up the brightness of that too much anyways. So now you can see this is the mask that we've got. We can go ahead and uncheck show overlay and then we can see the photo. Now you can bring the shadows up. And if it's too green, you can also add some magenta back in there. And it's really nice to be able to do this because obviously we're just affecting the foreground. We're not affecting the sky at all. And you can see it's taking its time here. A lot of times when you do use these masks, it does take a little bit of time to load out. So that looks really nice. Now the cool thing is I can go back and adjust this mask so I can adjust these things as I continue my edit if I want to. Um, the one other thing I wanna show you how to do, which is pretty cool, is to just affect the core of the Milky Way. So I can create a new mask here and we're, this time we're gonna do color range. And now you can see once again, we have this eyedropper tool. So the color range mask works because you click on the color that you wanna select and then it selects that color and similar colors. I wanna select this orange of the Milky Way and now you can see the overlay is going to come up here. And this is what I'm selecting is right in here on the Milky Way. So it looks pretty good already, but we can refine it. We can increase to add a little more area that it's affecting, or we can decrease the refine to reduce the area. I'm going to go ahead and leave it right about there. Now I'm going to uncheck show overlay. And now I can go in and make some adjustments. So you can bring up the exposure here. I do wanna bring up the saturation. I can bring up the highlights. So you can do quite a few things to make your Milky Way really pop here. And I also like to pair this with another mask here that I'll show you. We're gonna make a color range mask of the middle strip of the Milky Way. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because I want to contrast the uh, core of the Milky Way with everything else around it. And this one, I'm gonna reduce the refine to about right there. I'll uncheck show overlay. And now we can go in, we can drop the exposure a little bit. We can increase the saturation if we wanted to. Uh, we could drop the blacks just to give it a little bit more punch there. And now after I adjust this a lot of times, I'll go back in 
and go to my previous mask and adjust the core of the Milky Way again, just to help it really, really look nice. And that is looking pretty good to me so far. Um, so you can see there's a ton of different things that you can do here. You could keep creating new masks of really anything that you want. You could select any particular thing. For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna do those things. The last thing that I like to do on a photo like this is to come down, uh, you're going to unclick this show mask box, and then you're gonna come down here, you're gonna go to effects, and you're going to reduce the vignette here, or negative on the amount, to create a really nice vignette around your frame. And right about there looks pretty nice to me. You can see just like that, we easily went from this before to after. Super simple, super quick and easy. Like I said, you can do a lot more adjusting if you want to. This was just a quick and easy way of showing you how to go about using this masking tool over here. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Alrighty guys, hopefully that video was helpful for you and you guys will be able to edit your Milky Way photos a little bit better after watching this. Really appreciate you guys checking it out. As always, feel free to drop a comment down below if you guys have any questions and I'd be happy to help you out. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Always appreciate it and we will talk to you guys next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.